A veteran of the Apollo missions, Skylab, and the early stages of the shuttle program, astronaut Alan Bean logged over 1,671 hours in space, with about eight hours of that time spent walking on the moon during the Apollo 12 mission. Bean retired from NASA in 1981 to devote himself to painting full-time. According to him, he was fortunate enough to visit worlds and see sights no artist's eye, past or present, had ever viewed firsthand, and he hoped to express these experiences through the medium of art. I had the opportunity to visit with Alan and talk about his inspiration. Hi. Welcome, Johnny. Welcome to my studio. Come Thank in. you, Gus. Thank, Thank you so much, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, welcome. This Thank is where you. I spend most of my days, Johnny. This is beautiful. Thank you very much. I uh, enjoy being here. I enjoy being an artist. and. Just this environment is so perfect for uh, for an artist. It's very quiet. Yes, sir. I have some of my paintings on the wall, that, uh, uh, the ones that I think are the best, so that whatever I do next is hopefully as good as that. Sometimes it's not, but I'm always trying to do it. Come on in. Thank you, thank you. I see like the texture on, the, on these paintings. Are those like your boot prints? Those are boot prints. I, I've always liked texture. Let me show you how I do it. I would love to see this. Okay, first I start off and I uh, imagine a painting, what it's gonna be like. Yes, sir. Okay, I wanna tell a story of some kind because I left NASA to uh, tell the stories that I knew of humans on the moon. Now, when I get ready to paint the, the picture, I say, I gotta get some texture. So I cut a board like this. It's a plywood that you make real wooden airplanes out of. Then I make a, get a texturing material called uh, modeling paste and put on here. Then I get a moon boot. Now, I can't get mine because we left ours on the moon to save weight. But this is just exactly like the one I wore, not as dirty as the one I wore. <laughs> But then I take it in the material, push it down in there, like that, see? Then I, after a while, maybe an hour or so, I lift it out, and then there's sort of an image of a boot. Then I wanted to have some other texture between it. So this is the hammer that I had on the moon that, is something else. that, uh, that I drove in the uh, flagstaff with and broke up rocks and uh, pounded rocks. But then when I thought, you know, I could use this to do something good. So I make other marks with this. See how that does? Oh. See how these marks are made with the hammer? Oh, I see. After I did that, I said, you know, I wish I had some moon dust to put in these paintings. Right, I heard about this. But uh, they didn't give us a little moon rock. We thought they might give us something for a ring, you know, or right. something for our wife or something. Sure. So one day I was sitting at my desk over here. Yes, Let's sir. walk over here, John. Thank you, I will. And I said, well, you know, I looked up on the wall and here was what NASA did give me. This is the flag, it used to be bigger, that went on my suit here, that I wore on the moon. Yes, sir. The NASA emblem here, right. Apollo 12 was here, and my name tag was here. Okay, those are the same thing from my backpack. It was on the cliffs, oh, the backpack. Yeah. So anyway, I'm looking at them, and I'm thinking, boy, these are dirty. Maybe <laughs> I ought to wash them, so they look as good as my Skylab stuff. <laughs> right. Shows how dumb you can be sometimes. And then I thought, you know, those are dirty with dust from the ocean of storms where we were. Wow. I do have moon dust. It's not very much because it's in there between the threads of this fabric. That's you can good. see it. So I said, if I'm willing to cut this up, because this meant a lot to me, sure. uh, I could have moon dust in my paintings. And then I said, you know, I'm spending the rest of my life doing these paintings to record what we did on the moon. So it'd be the right thing to do to make them as good as I could. If I had known that I was gonna do this, I would have asked Pete Conrad sometime there, I'd say, here's some dirt, rub it, rub it on me. <laughs> rub it all over me. <laughs> look, look, I'm gonna bring some of that back. <laughs> These are the first paintings ever in all of history, all of art history, from a place other than this earth. Yes. Now, someone on this earth has imagined what it would be on the moon and they painted it. Right. But I'm the first artist ever to go anywhere else. Right. And these are images from these other, this other world. 
Well, anyway, I'm glad you came to visit Johnny because uh, I'm proud of this. I'm proud of it to be part of NASA, proud to be uh, working there for 18 years. Uh, the finest humans I ever met in the world in my life were at NASA, and I'm sure they're there now. I don't know many of them anymore, but I'm sure they still represent the cream of the crop in character, in ambition, and imagination, because that's uh, what I found when I was there. We had an impossible dream to accomplish when I got there, but I was surrounded by people that believed we could find a way to do it. And that's one of the things I think about frequently is at NASA, you have the opportunity to accomplish impossible dreams. The rest of the world doesn't know this. The rest of the world is busy selling shoes or uh, convincing you to invest your money with them or something. They're doing that sort of thing. Right. Meanwhile, NASA is over here trying to achieve something that could never be done even a year earlier. Sure. And they're good at doing this. And uh, uh, I just feel blessed to have been part of NASA for 18 years. Wow, I mean, there's words to live by. And you know, yeah. you, might not know, you might not know a lot of names back at NASA, but everybody seems to know you. I'll tell you that. And I thank <laughs> you for your time. All right, Seriously, Johnny, thank so you much for fun. coming by. Thank you very much.